Welcome to the CSUM video learning module on working out solution composition problems. My name is Simon Garrett. In this video, we'll work through some examples of problems dealing with molarity, the most common unit of concentration used by chemists. This is part two. I suggest you look at part one of this video and review your lecture notes and textbook material before starting. You will need a calculator. Here's your first example. Question 1. What is the molarity of a solution made by dissolving 0.400 moles of NaCl in water to make 0.800 liters of solution? Stop the video here and work out your answer. Our first step is to write a solution map, no pun intended, a plan for how to attack this question. We know molarity requires moles of solute and volume of solution in liters, so these are our starting points. This is a straightforward example, since we have both of these quantities in the question text. The solute, the thing being dissolved, is the NaCl, and the NaCl is being dissolved in water, so water is the solvent. The next step is to calculate the moles of the solute and volumes of the solution in liters. We'll use an equation for molarity in a second, and it contains both of these terms, so we'll certainly need them. With such a simple problem, we don't have much work to do. There are 0.400 moles of solute and a total solution volume of 0.800 liters. Questions like this are sometimes written a little sloppily and may say dissolved in 0.800 liters of water instead of to make 0.800 liters of solution. There is a subtle difference. We really want the total volume of the solution as given here. But dissolved in 0.8 liters of water tells us the volume of the solvent only. The volume of solution includes the sum of the solute and solvent volumes. This is much trickier to work out and probably not what the question writer meant. Regardless, if you see a question like this, Assume the total volume of the solution is equal to the volume of the solvent. Now we can calculate molarity. The equation we use is molarity equals solute moles divided by solution volume in liters. Inserting our numbers gives us the answer 0.500m. The higher this number, the more concentrated the solution. The lower the molarity, the more dilute the solution. That one was reasonably easy. Let's try another one. Question two. A solution contains 0.125 moles of CaCl2, calcium chloride, per 750 milliliters of aqueous solution. What is the molarity of this solution? Stop the video here and work out your answer. Our first step is to pull out the information we need from the question and to write a solution map. We will need moles of solute and liters of solution. We have moles of solute from the question, so clearly we need to convert milliliters into liters before we can proceed. Once we have liters of solution, we can use it with the moles of solute to calculate molarity. We need to calculate moles of solute and liters of solution. In this question, we have 0.125 moles of solute and 0.750 liters of solution. We converted the volume units for the solution. If you don't remember conversion units, here is the conversion for milliliters to liters. The conversion factor is 1 times 10 to the minus 3 liters divided by 1 milliliter. The numerator and denominator are the same quantity but expressed in different units. We chose this form, not its upside down version, so that the units cancel properly in our calculation. We can calculate molarity next. The equation is molarity equals solute moles divided by solution volume in liters. And inserting our numbers gives us the answer 0.167m. We'd say this was a 0.167 molar solution. Remember, the uppercase M means molarity, or moles per liter. Not too bad, just one simple unit conversion before we could use the molarity equation. 
Question 3. A solution contains 0.086 grams of dissolved O2 per 10 liters of water. What is the molarity of this solution? Stop the video here and work on your answer. This problem might involve a few calculations, so let's map out our route first. We ultimately need moles of solute and liters of solution to calculate molarity. This time we have liters from the question, but we don't have moles of solute. Fortunately, we have enough information to calculate this. We will convert grams of O2 into moles of O2 and then use that information combined with liters of solution to calculate molarity. The next step is to calculate the quantities we need. We have 2.7 times 10 to the minus 3 moles of O2 and 10 liters of solution. Did you remember how to convert 0.086 grams of O2 into moles of O2? If you didn't, here's how to do it. To convert grams into moles, we need a conversion factor that involves grams and moles. This is called the molar mass, and for elements it comes directly from the periodic table. In this case, the molar mass is used upside down to allow units to cancel. But regardless, one mole of O2 is equivalent to 31.98 grams of O2. And the answer comes out to be 2.7 times 10 to the minus 3 moles of O2. We now have all the information we need to calculate the molarity. The equation is molarity equals solute moles divided by solution volume in liters. And inserting our numbers gives us the answer 2.7 times 10 to the minus 4 moles per liter. This seems like a small concentration, but actually this is the approximate concentration of oxygen in natural waters. And it is enough for aquatic organisms to survive on. Question 4. 17.93 grams of MgF2 is dissolved in 0.234 liters of water. What is the molarity of this solution? Pause your video here and write down your answer. To help us organize the information and what to do with it, we'll write out our solution map. Remember, we'll eventually need moles of solute and liters of solution to calculate molarity. We are missing the moles of solute. Again, we have the information we need to convert grams of MgF2 into moles of MgF2. Moles of solute combined with liters of solution can then be used to calculate molarity. We'll assume the question 0.234 liters means the total volume of the solution, otherwise we can't solve it. Our next step is to calculate the quantities we need. We have 0.288 moles of MgF2 and 0.234 liters of solution. This is similar to the previous problem in that we needed to convert grams into moles. Did you do this part successfully? Here's the answer in case you didn't. To convert grams into moles, we need the conversion factor called molar mass. Using the information from the periodic table, we calculate that the molar mass of this compound, MgF2, is 62.30 grams per mole. But we need to use the upside down version to allow us to cancel units properly. See? Your answer should be 0.288 moles of MgF2. We now have the information we need to calculate molarity. As always, the equation is molarity equals solute moles divided by solution volume in liters and dropping in our values produces a concentration, molarity, of 1.23 m or 1.23 moles per liter. How about another example? Question 5. What mass of NaBr, sodium bromide, is required to make 0.500 liters of a 0.250 m aqueous NaBr solution? Pause the video here and write up, down your answer. This type of problem is commonly encountered in the laboratory. You know what concentration solution you need and what volume of it for your experiment, but not how much solute you should weigh out to make this solution. 
To help us, we'll come up with a solution map. This question is quite different to the previous examples. They asked us to find concentration or molarity. But this one gives us molarity together with the solution volume and asks us to find the mass of solute. Actually, we're working backwards here. If we think of the molarity equation, molar molarity equals moles of solute divided by liters of solution, we can use the information given to find the moles of solute by rearrangement. So, we'll use molarity and liters to calculate the moles of solute given the definition of molarity. With moles of solute, we can use molar mass to convert to grams. Our next step is to calculate moles of solute using the volume and molarity information given in the question. The definition of molarity is molarity equals solute moles divided by solution volume in liters. We can rearrange this as solute moles equals molarity multiplied by solution liters. Inserting the values from the question, we get 0.125 moles. Note that units cancel appropriately. We've almost finished the problem now. All that remains is to calculate the mass of solute from the moles of solute. For this calculation, we'll need the molar mass of sodium bromide. A quick glance at the periodic table tells us that the molar mass is 102.89 grams per mole. So the last step is to calculate the mass. 0.125 moles multiplied by 102.89 grams per mole equals 12.9 grams. This means if we want to make 0.500 liters of a 0.250 m aqueous solution of sodium bromide, we dissolve 12.9 grams of sodium bromide solid in enough water to make a total volume of 0.500 liters. The concentration of the solution would be 0.250 m. You can double check this if you want before we move on to our final example. Question 6. What mass of CaI2, calcium iodide, is required to make 2.00 liters of a 0.050 m aqueous solution? Pause the video now and calculate the answer. Like the previous example, we are given the concentration of the solution and the volume needed and asked to find the mass of solute. We'll start with the solution map. We'll use the molarity equation as a starting point. Molarity equals moles of solute divided by liters of solution. We'll rearrange it to find the moles of solute. Then another calculation is needed to turn moles of solute into grams of solute. Here we go. Calculating the moles of solute from volume and molarity comes next. This is the equation for molarity, and we know two of these three quantities. Our unknown is the solute moles. Rearranging gives us solute moles equals molarity multiplied by solution liters. We can insert the values from the question, and we get 0 0.10 moles. The last step is to calculate the mass of solute from the moles of solute. For this calculation, we need the molar mass of calcium iodide at 293.88 grams per mole. Finally, 0 0.10 moles multiplied by 293.88 grams per mole equals 29 grams. To make 2 liters of a 0 0.050 m calcium iodide solution, 29 grams of calcium iodide solid is dissolved in enough water to make a total volume of 2 liters. The concentration of the solution would be 0.050 m. Again, you can double check this before moving on if you'd like. So let's review. Read the question carefully and identify the solute, the solvent, and or the solution. Make sure you know which information relates to which component. To calculate molarity, you'll need moles of solute and liters of solution. Some calculations may be involved to calculate these terms, especially if you're given a mass of solute. Convert mass of solute to moles using molar mass. 
Use the equation molarity equals solute moles divided by liters of solution to calculate molarity. In some questions, you may have to work backwards by rearranging the definition of molarity. For example, you might use moles of solute equals molarity multiplied by liters of solution if given the last two terms and asked to find the moles of solute. You might have to convert moles to mass or vice versa using mass equals moles multiplied by molar mass or a rearrangement of this in some questions. The strategy for these sorts of problems, in fact any multi-step calculation in chemistry, is to remain flexible. You'll need to use the information in the question and a few basic mathematical equations to develop a strategy for solving on the fly. Think about what information you're given, what information you need to get, and the steps necessary to get you the quantities you need. Chemistry is all about using the basic tools you've been taught to solve problems you've never seen before. Keep your head and methodically plan which tool, equation, to select to reach the information you desire.